Well, Lisa, Quentin Tarantino is a director that I accept on his own terms, which is to say I accept that his imagination lives inside this kind of underground 1970s fantasy land. I accept that he will always be making his own flamboyant versions of 70s grindhouse movies. Mm, I thought Inglorious Bastards was his best since Pulp Fiction. And look, Django Unchained is a super bloody and outrageous black exploitation revenge western, and I say that's fine. I just want it to be a great one. And there are moments when I think it is really juicy and fun, especially when Jamie Foxx as Django, a former slave, and his partner, an abolitionist bounty hunter played by Christoph Waltz, when they show up at the plantation run by Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio, the film's token white supremacist, white supremacist Nazi, um, and these three and other characters are all sitting around, the movie really has that Tarantino hum. But I don't think enough of it does. I think it is a scattershot movie. I think some of it just isn't clever enough. I think the last 40 minutes is some of the weakest filmmaking of Tarantino's mm -hmm. career. I loved some of it. The bottom line is this is the only Tarantino movie I have mixed feelings about other than Kill Bill Volume 2. Okay, well, well put thesis. Um, I know what you're saying about having to accept Tarantino on his own basis because this is what you get when you get this guy. My point of view on this is this is not enough anymore. It is one thing to take on a mix of genres and to say he's going to mush up the western and the slave stuff and the spaghetti western and whatever he does, but I'm finding that there are fewer and fewer ideas behind it so that when he does his splatter, because there is incredible blood splatter in this, there's incredible use of racial epithets in this which are meant to be provocative and they provoke, but then you say, why? Why are you doing this? You're not provoking me towards any end. And I feel like he's living in such a tiny little bubble of references to movies that it's not reaching me anymore. So I am mm -hmm. impatient. Well, you know, I was sort of ready to say that about Tarantino at one point, but I did think that Inglorious Bastards showed that you could take this kind of mix master version of how to make an old movie and do it in a way that is so compelling, so heady in a way, where it's a lot more than just blood spattering, that you're hypnotized by it. I've seen that movie three times. I love it. I was ready for this to be the same thing. There are moments, the, Di the DiCaprio character is sort of the equivalent of the Christoph Waltz character in Inglorious, in that he's a racist who elevates his own ideology to this kind of puckishly thought out vision of the world. He's really entertaining. I think DiCaprio is great. The movie is not remotely on his side. It is a very powerful anti-racist movie. I loved that sort of battle, but the difference is that this movie isn't nearly as clever as Inglorious Bastards. It doesn't have enough characters to fill out its three-hour running time. I just feel like it's Tarantino sort of vamping rather than really doing the great filmmaking, even within this pulp way of working, that he can do. What I think is the key for me, and when you're saying that, is it's not as clever as Tarantino thinks it is. I think right. that he gets carried away with himself and with these grand scenarios that he puts together. Incredible staging, incredible showdowns, incredible, you know, scenes that are meant to shock. Mm -hmm. I feel, I, I, I'm saying this again because as you talk about it, it makes me think of specific scenes as they come to mind. He, he's not that deep. And so to take on, it's, you know, in, in Glorious Bastards, he takes on Nazis, he takes on Hitler, he takes on a whole mush up of things, but it's all viewed within the idea of, here's a guy who's seen a lot of movies. And I think the farther and farther away he gets from dealing, what does it mean to be racist, for real, rather than saying these well, words? I, think there, I don't think he gets to any of this. I think he's playing. I think and there playing are playing with blood and playing with provocative words that I feel like, you don't get it. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't talk like well, that. Well, I, I, I think I know what you're onto, and I agree with you, which is that I think there is a depth in how Tarantino works, and I think in some ways he explores certain forbidden racial terrain here in a way that, that movies explores don't. Explores it to nothing. No, I think that he, he, is, he is looking at a slice of American experience in his way, but I think when you talked about the shock value, mm. that I think is the problem with this movie, which is that in Django Unchained, Tarantino is so addicted to the shock value of showing these forbidden racist things that went on, this violence, the, the incredible, incredible use of joke. the N-word, right. that for him, 
He's getting off on that. He's saying, look at this. Look at how forbidden my filmmaking is. Well, guess what? I think that's valid, but it can't just be that. It's got to be clever and amazing as well. And I think in some ways, he got a little lazy there. He thought that the shock value would carry him, especially in the last 40 minutes, which is splatterific. But that's all it is. It's like an unironic exploitation movie.